Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel Doctors Corner. We are going to discuss today Ramsey Hunt syndrome. It is also known as herpes zoster oticus. Okay, so the other name is herpes zoster oticus. Okay, so what exactly is this Ramsey Hunt syndrome? What are the signs and symptoms of the Ramsey Hunt syndrome and all we are going to discuss today. So basically. Uh, just to define what exactly is the Ramsey Hunt syndrome, it is the inflammation of the geniculate ganglion of the facial nerve. Okay, so there is a geniculate ganglion, geniculate ganglion. So it is related to the facial nerve. I'll explain in detail about this in the pathophysiology. Right now, just to know what exactly is the Ramsey Hunt syndrome, remember it is the inflammation of the geniculate ganglion which is related to the facial nerve. Okay, so, when there is an inflammation of this geniculate ganglion and it is mainly this inflammation is caused due to varicella zoster virus. Okay. So, varicella zoster virus causes the inflammation of the geniculate ganglion of the facial nerve and that clinical condition it is known as herpes sorry herpes zoster oticus or Ramsey Hunt syndrome. Okay. So, uh, in last year, sorry, last year June 2022, one Canadian singer Justin Bieber, okay, he, even he too suffered from this particular disorder of Ramsey Hunt syndrome. So, basically, what happens in this uh, Ramsey Hunt syndrome is there is a triad of uh, ipsilateral facial paralysis, it is on one side there will be facial paralysis facial paralysis in isolated facial paralysis it is also known as Bell's palsy okay you can see in this pic so this half of the face is paralyzed okay so if ipsilateral facial paralysis then otalgia that means pain in the ear okay otalgia and vesicles close to the ear and the auditory canal so there is a triad of these three things vesicles close to the ear close to the ear and auditory canal and auditory canal okay so classically this triad of this three symptoms like facial paralysis otalgia and this vesicles close to the ear and the auditory canal you can see this rash okay near to the ear and the auditory canal so this type of presentation together it is termed as ramsey hunt syndrome okay now we'll discuss why uh, these things will uh, occur what is the pathophysiology and all before that the history that is uh, why this term uh, why this is known as ramsey hunt syndrome it is uh, the syndrome is named on james ramsey hunt okay so he was a american neurologist he was an american neurologist so he has described the syndrome so basically there are three uh, neurological syndromes by his name ramsey hunt syndrome 1 2 and 3 so out of this more particularly this is ramsey hunt syndrome number 2 ramsey hunt syndrome 2 okay more specifically okay so after knowing this let us discuss some pathophysiology then we'll discuss about the signs and symptoms why exactly this disorder will occur okay so let us discuss this uh, etiology or pathophysiology okay etiology means cause or pathophysiology the mechanism of the disease process pathophysiology so we have already discussed in the definition of this this disorder is caused by one virus the name of that virus is varicella zoster virus okay let me write it clearly here it is known as varicella zoster virus okay i hope you have heard this term or the name of this virus varicella zoster virus okay it is the same virus which causes chicken pox hope you know this okay those who don't know the details about this disorder of chicken pox i have already uploaded a video uh, related to the chicken pox please go back and search in the playlist of general medicine or uh, microbiology or pediatrics you can get the video of chicken pox so this virus varicella zoster virus mainly in the children it will cause a clinical condition known as chicken pox okay which is a very common disorder during the childhood okay and which is self-limiting so basically what happens is 
after the cure of this chicken pox that is when this chicken pox is uh, cured or treated whatever so this virus varicella zoster virus it will remain dormant okay dormant means temporarily inactive it will remain dormant inside the body okay inside the body where exactly in the body is in the nerves okay in the nerves in the ganglions so more specifically for this disorder so after an initial infection of the chicken pox during the childhood so this virus will remain more specifically in this geniculate ganglion where i am highlighting okay now i'll highlight with the red color this is the geniculate ganglion of the facial nerve ganglion in in means collection of the neuronal cell bodies inside the central nervous system okay so this ganglion they will remain dormant okay after the initial infection in the childhood but when the whenever there is a, some physiological stresses okay whenever there is a, some physiological stress okay or some immunosuppression immunosuppression due to any disease or by uh, some immunosuppressive therapy or due to any other reason where there is a decrease in the immunity then this particular virus which was in the dormant state in the geniculate ganglion now it will be reactivated that is the reactivation and in general reactivation of this varicella zoster virus during the adulthood it is termed as herpes zoster okay it is termed as herpes zoster now more specifically if the virus was remaining in this geniculate ganglion of the facial nerve okay here there is one more diagram then it is known as herpes zoster oticus or the ramsey hunt syndrome okay they, this virus can remain in the other nerve endings also but this one of the clinical manifestation of the herpes zoster is ramsey hunt syndrome where the virus is in the geniculate ganglion okay as you can see the nerves and the branches of this geniculate ganglion i am highlighting with the red color now there is this one this greater petrosal nerve and all so ultimately it will supply even to the eyes that is the lacrimal gland so deficiency or infection or inflammation of this geniculate ganglion will affect this and there is dry eyes dry eyes are seen okay that is there is the lack of tears in the eyes similarly it is also this facial nerve this is the main facial nerve okay so they will supply they will supply the uh, sensory branches via the cord or tympani nerve to the anterior two third of the tongue so it will lead to the loss of uh, taste sensation from the anterior two third of the tongue also it will supply this uh, submandibular salivary glands and all so this will lead to decrease in the salivary secretion that is ultimately it will lead to dry mouth okay this is the reason of the various clinical manifestation which we are going to discuss similarly uh, it, it also supplies to the stapedius muscle in the ear so because of this loss of function due to the inflammation of this particular uh, facial nerve or the geniculate ganglion it will lead to the hearing loss hearing loss or sometimes even hyperacusis okay and uh, this motor root of this facial nerve again it will it is supplying the facial muscles so it, there will be typical facial paralysis okay hope you understood the pathophysiology what exactly happens in this ramsey hunt syndrome so let me revise there is a inflammation of the geniculate ganglion of the facial nerve by the reactivation of the varicella zoster virus varicella zoster virus is nothing but the virus which will cause the chicken pox a viral infection okay so after the initial infection during the childhood after the treatment or, or whatever the process is there it will subside and the virus will remain dormant in the nerve ending especially here in the geniculate ganglion and during the adulthood this due to enter physiological stress or immunosuppression it will reactivate and it will cause a clinical syndrome now let us discuss the signs and symptoms uh, that is the clinical features or the signs and symptoms of this particular disorder so how a patient suffering from the ramsey hunt syndrome will present to you as a healthcare provider or a doctor okay let us discuss one by one what are the possible signs and symptoms okay so firstly what you can see is there is acute facial nerve paralysis this is the first most important thing because it is infecting the geniculate ganglion which is a uh, linked or the which is the part or a course of a facial nerve so you can see acute facial nerve paralysis that is on one side where there is a infection so you can see acute facial paralysis so as you can see in this pic this half side is paralyzed okay 
this one okay this half side acute facial paralysis so isolated facial paralysis also known as bell's palsy okay but here there in the ramsey hunt syndrome also you can see this facial paralysis then other symptom what you what you can expect is uh, there is pain in the ear okay so it, it is known as otalgia already we have discussed in the triad classical triad okay there will be severe pain in the ear also there can be pain in the jaw okay pain in the jaw that is at the angle of the mandible bone or there can be pain in the neck these are the classical presentations facial paralysis or this generalized pain in the ear jaw or neck and when this affected branches of this facial nerve it may lead to taste loss i have already described why there will be taste loss especially in the anterior two third of the tongue because of the involvement of the cauda tympani branch of the facial nerve anterior two third of the tongue okay then due to the uh, decreased nerve supply to the salivary glands it will leads to dry mouth also to the lacrimal glands dry eyes okay dry eyes is seen and one of the classical things and erythematous vesicular rash vesicles are seen near the ear canal okay sometimes even in the tongue or even or the heart palate okay as this facial nerve is closely associated with the vestibulocochlear nerve vestibulocochlear nerve means eighth cranial nerve okay vestibulocochlear nerve is the eighth cranial nerve so due to the involvement of the vestibulocochlear nerve or the eighth cranial nerve so other symptoms related to this nerve is tinnitus okay eighth nerve mainly controlling the hearing and the uh, this one posture and uh, balance okay so tinnitus means ringing sensation in the ear abnormal sounds which is normally not there okay or hearing loss or even hyperacusis okay so there is a hearing loss or hyperacusis or there can be vertigo okay vertigo so even the solo reflex might also be affected okay so even the trigeminal nerve involvement can cause the numbness of the face so they are closely associated in the internal acoustic meatus the facial nerve and the eighth cranial nerve anyhow we have discussed the clinical features and all now let's go to the diagnosis so diagnosis is mainly clinical diagnosis is by the clinical features we can diagnose it almost uh, about 30 percent of the patients can be 30 to 70 percent of the patients can be diagnosed by the clinical examination itself okay but for the confirmation of the diagnosis polymerase chain reaction that is pcr okay pcr by detection of of the varicella uh, varicella zoster virus detection in the uh, vesic vesicular fluids okay the rash fluids vesicular fluid so in the pcr polymerase chain reaction you can detect the so particular uh, uh, antibodies also by immunofluorescent assay okay so these are the few of the lab diagnosis but most of them are basically it is a clinical diagnosis okay immunofluorescent assay of the vesicular fluid okay which can help in the diagnosis apart from the other laboratory diagnosis like uh, wbc count esr and electrolytes okay which can distinguish from other inflammatory etiologies so after confirming that it is due to the <coughs> varicella zoster virus and all what could be the treatment of this okay so what is the treatment so it it is a viral infection so basically it is a self limiting condition so it can self limiting condition so it can resolve by its own but many a times it can be very severe and treatment is required so what treatment mainly the antivirals okay but this remember this it has to be started within 72 hours of the starting of the process within 72 hours of the onset of the facial paralysis so if you start this within 72 hours of the onset of facial paralysis then only it will be effective or else it may not be effective or else it may just prevent the further damage okay further damage so what possible antivirals you can give the same what you give for chicken pox like acyclovir velocyclovir 
और फैम साइक्लोवीर फैम साइक्लोवीर ओके सो यू कैन गिव दिस फॉर अराउंड फाइव टू सेवन डेज फाइव टू सेवन डेज बट समाइम्स इन सीवियर कंडीशन अप टू ट्वेंटी वन डेज ऑल्सो इज प्रिस्क्राइब ओके अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस एंटी वायरल ड्रग्स इवन ए कोर्स ऑफ कॉर्टिकोस्टीरोड्स आर गिवन टू रिड्यूस द इन्फ्लमेशन एंड कॉर्टिकोस्टीरोड ओके आर गिवन सच एज प्रेडनीसोन to reduce the severity of the inflammation of the geniculate ganglion and reduce the pain okay and for uh, neuropathic pain neuropathic pain neuropathic pain that is otalgia and all so neuropathic drugs like gabapentin like gabapentin can be given so remember one thing what we are explaining the treatment and all it is only for the educational purpose okay anyone who is uh, seeing this particular video i just want to give a disclaimer it is only and only for educational purpose please someone who is at all who is suffering from any of our disorder please don't do self medication and consult your healthcare provider okay so gabapentin or even the tricyclic antidepressants tricyclic antidepressants okay even for them uh, this can be given okay so for the neuropathic pain and all and even sometimes for vertigo when there is uh, unbalanced vertigo so other drugs like uh, meclizine benzodiazepines and diazepam and vestibular therapy and all can be given or there is some other things okay so this all are about the treatment aspect of this one and general measures like physiotherapy and all can be given or in, in for example for dry eyes and all so there will be it can there will be eye patch eye patches should be kept out because the eyes may not be closing completely because of the facial paralysis uh, and there is lack of uh, lacrimation okay so these are the general uh, processes then what about prognosis prognosis around 30 to 70% of the cases 30 to 70% of the ramsey hunt patients suffering from this will recover there is a recovery okay recovery if it is early diagnosis and treated within 72 hours if the treatment has started within 72 hours okay so there is can be a possible recovery or else it can lead to the delayed complications or late complications are there so what are the possible late complications we see if if there is no recovery then there could be permanent permanent facial paralysis permanent facial paralysis or sometime there can be corneal abrasions corneal abrasions because uh, there is no lacrimation or due to the dry eyes and all then neuropathic pain and the post herpetic neuralgia which will persist for up to 3 months post herpetic neuralgia post herpetic fatigue is a common term okay which is also used post herpetic fatigue then even the weakness in the affected facial uh, muscles uh, sensitivity to cold and heat so these are the possible co uh, complications long term uh, co complications uh, sensitivity to cold and heat okay some long term complications such as uh, aphasia long term complication this was the general complication then some long term complication what we can see is aphasia that is the verbal processing deficits including speaking okay or sometime there will be uh, memory deficits also memory deficit including failures in the short term memory okay memory deficits and and this one vertigo or partial or full hearing loss so this can be a which hearing loss which can be partial or sometimes even the full or sometimes there will be hyperacusis partial or full hearing loss or hyperacusis okay or hyperactive muscles particularly in the neck and cheek and tinnitus so these are the long term complications of uh, the herpes zoster infection or herpes zoster otitis 
that is Ramsey Hunt syndrome. So, let me revise it quickly what we have studied today or what we have discussed today. So, we have discussed about the Ramsey Hunt syndrome. So, Ramsey Hunt syndrome it is also known as herpes zoster oticus. So, basically it is the inflammation of the geniculate ganglion of the facial nerve caused by the varicella zoster virus and uh, what are the classical triad of this? There is a facial paralysis, otalgia and vesicles near the ear and auditory canal. So, basically it is caused by the varicella zoster virus which causes chicken pox during the childhood and the virus may remain dormant in the geniculate ganglion and they will get reactivated due to physiological stresses or immuno suppression and due to the reactivation it will leads to the signs and symptoms of Ramsey Hunt syndrome. So, we have discussed of the various signs and symptoms and also the treatment with the antivirals and the corticosteroids and symptomatic treatment and the complications ok. So, please subscribe our channel Doctors Corner and share it with your friends. We will be making such informative lectures on various diseases and other subjects.